That report confirmed everything I've been saying about this horrible tax, this ripoff. It showed that 60% of Canadians pay more in the carbon tax than they get back in rebates. 100% of middle class Canadians lose out. In 2030 2031, we'll see a net gain receiving more from the Canada carbon rebate than the total amount they pay in federal fuel charge. That's what the PBO report says. So now's the time to clear the air on Pierre Polyev's big lie to Canadian. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev there, as well as Environment Minister Stephen Guibault, both claiming a win on the updated Parliamentary Budget Office report on the federal carbon tax that first sparked intense political debate on the policy more than years, two years ago, pardon me, and had to be redone this year when an error was discovered. It took into account not just the consumer portion of the carbon price, but also the industrial part as well. So what does the new analysis say? Are Canadians worse off, better off, or neither? With us now, live to unpack all of that, is Parliamentary Budget Officer himself, Yves Giroux. Mr. Giroux, good to see you. As always, thank you for making the time. My pleasure. I left out the analysis from the introduction because I'm hoping you can explain to me and everyone listening in layman's terms, and we'll kind of go through what you did analyze. So you're looking at the consumer portion of the carbon tax, mm -hmm. and the first thing you analyze what's, is what you called fiscal impact. So that's yeah. how much it costs us and how much we get back in the rebate, correct? Exactly. So how much it costs households, individuals, when we buy fossil fuels, for example, fill up the gas, the car gas tank, or buy natural gas to heat the home, et cetera, and the indirect costs of the fuel charge. For example, when we buy supplies, goods, services that have an energy component embedded, minus the carbon rebate. So it's indirect and direct costs yes. associated with the carbon tax, yes. and then you factor in the rebate. And, exactly. And what did you find? We find that the majority of households are better off once you consider just these aspects, carbon re uh, fuel charge paid, carbon minus the carbon rebate, uh, it's due to the fact that the government is returning 93% of the proceeds from the fuel charge to households. But when you look at economy-wide, households pay about 68% of the fuel charge. The rest is paid by not-for-profits, companies, and so on. So the households are paying, in aggregate, about 68% of the fuel charge, but they get 93% of the proceeds, so that's why most households are better off. And I think we had the graphic just up. Let's pull it up again. That shows on, you calculated in a dollar amount and then also as a percentage of income, I think yep. it was, right? How much better off. And, and, and then you averaged it out. And we've got three provinces we selected from across the country, Saskatchewan, Ontario, Newfoundland, and Labrador. So does that mean, let's say on average in Saskatchewan, you will be about on an annual basis $1,200 better off than prior, like if the carbon tax weren't there? Yeah, on average. But okay. again, it's an average. It depends on the household size, on Income, lifestyle. Income, everything, yes. 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 yes, okay, that was just an average, but that's sort of like the last column. Mm -hmm. Then you looked at uh, what you called the fiscal and economic impacts. And can you describe in layman's terms what more you took into account in that analysis? So the fiscal impact is just the fuel charge paid minus the rebates, but imposing a tax or a charge or a proceed on something means you get less of it, obviously, but it also affects the economy in certain ways. For example, if you have a fuel charge, the transportation sector is likely to be affected, the oil and gas, obviously, uh, all these sectors that are energy intensive. So it's very likely to reduce employment or employment income, but also investment income. For example, if you have shares in oil and gas corporations, the introduction of a carbon uh, levy or a fuel charge is likely to reduce the profits of this sector or the number of jobs in these sectors or the number of hours worked or the wages in these sectors that are affected by the fuel charge. So once you factor in these aspects or these consequences of the fuel charge, then the situation changes quite significantly. And, and if we could pull that board just back up, if you guys don't mind, in the control room, it shows then on average, more of a cost to Canadians. So the opposite, essentially, of what the initial and the exactly. fiscal analysis showed, exactly. right? Exactly, because then you have individuals, on average, will have a slightly lower employment income or investment income. As I said, if you have shares in corporations or dividends coming from these types of, of companies or businesses, then it will be uh, affected. So how did all of this change when you excluded the analysis, like basically what happened was the initial one was not just the consumer portion of the carbon tax, but the industrial portion, yeah. which are 
kind of two separate policies, but also politically, you know, fraught in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, so what happened when you removed the industrial? Like, is, is there a big change or is the what is the change? So we did that. We removed the uh, output based pricing system, the industrial emissions pricing regime. But we also included the changes that have been made since our last reports. For example, the exemption from the fuel charge for heating oil, but also the fact that it's not 90 percent of the fuel charge proceeds that are returned, but 93 percent. So there are a couple of things that change, plus updated emissions um, projections. So once you factor in all these changes, the negative impact is less important than it used to be because we included the industrial and the consumer charge. Now we only look at the consumer charge, so obviously the impact is lower. It's not as much of a negative impact. But still, on average, the average household is still worse off when taking into account the economic I and fiscal. And I think the government's <clears throat> contention is, and we heard it from the minister today, that essentially if you were to factor in, and, and we've talked about this before, if you were to factor in the impact of climate change on the economy, it would sing, swing the balance even more in the favor of uh, essentially their position. Um, you, you, have, uh, you, you specify in this why you don't. What is the reason that you don't? Well, the impact of climate change are global. And even if Canada acts, and I'm not saying Canada shouldn't act, but even if Canada acted alone or didn't act, given that we're about 2% of worldwide emissions, Canada acting alone does not make a significant or material difference on climate change. The best way to ensure that there are mitigated aspects of climate change or um, not as dire consequences is to have a global coordinated way. But even if Canada did nothing, that wouldn't change the overall picture. So that's why it's very difficult to include the consequences of climate change and assess what Canada moving would mean because we're a small player on the world stage when it comes to emissions. Is it fair to assess, though, that there is economic impact from climate change? Totally. And we've estimated that in a report in 2022. It was uh, our first attempt, and we recognize that it was very difficult to estimate the impact of climate change on something that is as complex as, on this, as the science of, of climate. But we did make an attempt at estimating the, the cost. And would you say that cost is, is impactful? Uh, yes. And, and what is difficult to assess when it comes to climate change is whether we will be um, having trigger points where, where we, the emissions will, will cross inflection points where the impact of climate change will be even bigger than just a linear relationship. So it's very difficult to determine the impact of climate change on a longer period. And finally, I think a lot of Canadians will be looking to you and this analysis because your name has been invoked so frequently in political debate over the carbon tax. My, uh, my conclusions that I draw from what you have determined is that, you know, when the government says you get more than you pay in, if they're referencing the fiscal analysis, then they are correct. Mm -hmm. When the Conservatives say it makes you worse off overall, and if they were specifically referenced, you know, if each side specifically referenced analysis, that if they were talking about the economic impact, and including uh, plus the fiscal impact, then they would be right too. Like everybody is, um, can actually, two things can be true at once, it seems. And that's a very good uh, summary of, of the report. If you look only at the fiscal impact, yes, that's true that people are better off. But if you look at the global impact, not only the fiscal, money in, money out, but the economic impact that will be felt because of the fuel charge, then that's true that the average household is worse off. And just before I let you go, you know, there, there was some, I guess, suggestion that this was not just a, you know, a mistake or a misunderstanding. Like, can, can you be clear with people watching, like, why did you include the industrial policy in the first place? It was an oversight. We really meant to have just the fuel charge, but the, the mechanical and the modeling is so complex. In fact, it involved several models on top of each other, feeding into each other, that the output-based pricing system, the industrial part, was included when it shouldn't have been included. Okay, I'm going to leave it on that note, Mr. Giroux. Appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much. My pleasure. That is Parliamentary Budget Officer Yves Giroux.